Sharon. On today's video, I'm going to show you 10 die cutting hacks. There's probably more out there. I'm sure there is, but today we're going to cover 10. So some of these you may know, some of them you may never have heard of, but I hope all of them help you in some way. If you currently do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to help you with your Stampin' Up! supply needs. Or if you need to contact me, go to my blog, anything like that, Click the show more button below the video and you'll be able to find everything you need. So I can't wait to share all of these hacks with you. And again, I hope they help. On today's video, we're going to go through 10 die cutting hacks. I'm going to have this list plus some pretty pictures um, as a free download on my blog. You can find the link below the video. Just click the show more button and then look for my blog link for uh, die cutting hacks. It is down below the video. So we're going to go through 10 of them. I'm sure that there's more that I have not thought about. Now, when you're using um, the Stampin' Cut and Emboss, it specifically has an extra plate for dies. Okay. This says place die cutting edge down. Okay. So this is um, a plate that is used with the Stampin' Cut and Emboss. If you have another machine, you'll have to figure out your own sandwiching. Um, but on this one, we have our platform. And since I'm using dies, I'm gonna put that on. And then I have my plates that get very well loved. And you'll notice that they'll start to bow, but if you'll start flipping them over and around, it will help keep that a little bit flatter. Um, it won't prevent it, but it will help. Let's just do that. I'm gonna take a piece of washi tape and I'm just going to put it over the eye. You could use uh, post-it notes. Um, I, I've had luck with, I've had good luck with like painter's tape or removable tape, but sometimes depending on the cardstock, it might tear and might not work, but you can try it. So I'm just gonna do this. Oh, this is so hard at my table because of the angle. But this is an important video for me to share, so I'm gonna I'm gonna suffer through. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna take off the washi tape. We're gonna remove our die. And We're going to poke out our word. And there is our tittle. It stayed. Isn't that so fun? So leave that there until you're ready to uh, put it on your card and then you won't lose it. Next tip. So I'm gonna run this through again and we're gonna cut out the word chocolate. our chocolate. I will have all the supplies that I'm using too today as well on that um, tutorial, that download for you, just so you'll know, because I don't, I mean, this video is not about certain dies or, um, you know, certain, pro, certain uh, stamp sets or whatever. Okay, so we've cut it out. We're going to set that aside. Now, this is not on my list, but see all these bits on here? Best way to clean those off is with the other plate. Just take care of that. There you go. That was a free tip. <laughs> okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to do embossing dip. So we've got a cute little, you know, cute little chocolate, but we wanna dress it up just a little bit. So I'm gonna take a post-it note and I'm just going to put it over half of my word like that. 
And then I'm going to take a Versamark pad. Oh, that's a little crooked. Let's fix that. Let's put it right on the line. And then we'll do this. Okay. So I'm going to take my Versamark pad. Pick this up. I'm going to use some craft tweezers. I'm using copper embossing powder and my craft tweezers. And tap off the excess. And then I'm going to heat set. I dropped it. Okay, so look how fun. Just have a look, you know, like dipping chocolate. There you go. So there's something called shadowing. You can cut out your word in one color, then cut it out again in another, and then you can just shadow it. I know this is really tiny, but just shadow it, just offset it. So it just gives your word dyes another look. Shadow dyeing. So Stampin' Up! sells adhesive sheets. They come, I think there's like 10 sheets, but they're really long, like 12 inches long. And so I'm just gonna cut this to size of my cardstock. I'm just gonna do it with some snips. And then I will save the rest of it to use on another project. They have a little sticky backing. So we're gonna take that off. Place that down. So this is a great tip to help you with um, adding adhesive to the back of those dies um, because all the words and stuff makes it really hard um, to add adhesive, add glue. There's other ways you can do it, but this is just an easy way and since it had to do with dies, I thought I would share it. I am not getting a good angle. <laughs> uh, I hope that the tips I'm sharing is worth the pain that I'm going through. No, I'm just kidding. I just, um, I try everything I can to make it work on camera, but it's just really hard sometimes. Okay. All right, so we're gonna punch these out. Whoops. All right, so love you more than. This is not really gonna be a, a formal card, but we're gonna put it together just so you can see how it works. Love you. I just realized love you then love you more than <laughs> I should have had a, a card to go by and then I could have put chocolate on the back I could have put the adhesive on the back of that but that it just helps because this way now I have to take my liquid glue so 
we're just gonna do it. So either use the adhesive sheets or you can use liquid glue and a part of a sponge to add adhesive to the back. Love you more than chocolate. There we go. So two different ways to add adhesive to the back of your dots. Another fun hack is, can you see all the bits and pieces on my work surface? You can take a lint roller to help clean that up. And then that way you can keep on going. Sometimes you have, mm -hmm, where is it? Sometimes you have really detailed dyes and it makes it really hard to get some of those bits out. So if you will take a dryer sheet, place it over your cardstock. Whoops. You can use a used dryer sheet that usually works better. But since I didn't have one, the plate. plus it'll make your card smell smell good. <laughs> I knew this was going to be harder because I've got a little bit more thickness in there. So now all those bits came out because of the dryer sheet. Isn't that amazing? So yeah, it really does work better. It leaves a little bit of a residue when you don't have one that's used, but look at that. Just a few little pieces that I have to get out. And when you have a take your pick tool, you can get this uh, brush end, and then you can use the little foam mat that comes with it and get all those bits out. Um, you can use the other end to poke any other ones but yeah, super easy and really helps. Another way to do it is wax paper from your kitchen. This stayed in my studio for so long, I finally had to put it back in the kitchen when my husband asked for it, but um, I use it a lot. So again, same thing. We're just gonna put the wax paper on top of the cardstock. And then we're gonna place our die. Whoops. Again, it helped keep all the dies, all the bits, mostly on there. And then I'll just use my brush or you can even pop some of them out, but it just makes it so much easier thanks to the wax paper. So here's another hack. The rollers on any die cutting machine are different. They're all different. The tension is different. Um, sometimes you're doing the sandwiching exact, exactly like you're supposed to, but for some reason, those detailed dies just won't cut out. You know, you, you run it through one way, you run it back through, you turn it and all that, and you still struggle. So what I do, if I have a die that does that, and I noticed this more of my old die cutting machine that I had to do this more. I have not had to do it with my stamp and cut and emboss. You have seen me struggle trying to crank it through. My rollers are really good. Um, so I don't really have to do this and I'm not gonna completely do it because I don't know if I can. <laughs> But I sacrifice a piece of cardstock. Now this is um, basic wet thick, or you could do a colored cardstock, and you're just gonna put that on top. And what that will do, well, let's see if I can do it. I don't know, we'll try. What that will do is 
really cut out all those details. Ugh, see, I don't need a shim for mine, but if you're having trouble getting your detailed dies to cut out, goodness gracious, then you, <laughs> then you will appreciate this shim idea. And I just keep this stored with my extra plates or, um, you know, in a drawer or whatever. So, oh boy. Okay, we are almost there. Whew. I knew that was going to be hard because my rollers are tight, but on my old one, it was not that tight. So there we go. We have our very detailed, and I didn't even have to use a piece of wax paper or a dryer sheet because voila, it came out by itself. But that extra shim does help. Okay, now we're going to get to the really good stuff. I'm going to clean up my area again. You can dry emboss. This one turns out really good. Um, you can't see it as well on that side. Let me look at the camera, see if you can see it. So I have a embossed area on my uh, both my pieces of my cardstock. This one is bolder and then this one's more subtle. So what I did was I put two pieces of the basic white thick with my snowflake and I ran it through. And what that did was, because I had so much thickness, it did not cut. It did not cut either one of them. It just embossed them, okay? So let me show you. So I have all my plates. All my sandwiching is still the same. I try to angle this so you can see it because I know it causes a shadow. But, you know, if you're doing a snow scene and you don't have a snowflake embossing folder, but you have snowflake dies, this is going to help you. And it is very tight to go through because I have extra thickness there. So see, it didn't cut. It cut that one. Oh, on my other machine that I have, it didn't cut. It embossed. That's lovely. It cut it. I told you the rollers on this machine are tight. Um, my old machine that I have over on the other side of the studio is what did this. So, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in there because I'm not going to edit that out of the video because I want you to know that it is all about the um, tension of your rollers, okay? I swear, it's the same, same paper, same die that did these, but I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, that is really cool. You know, something that was a boo-boo. Um, it's really cool because it didn't cut all the way through on my second piece, but it's just giving you um, a very embossed piece. So even though this piece is, I could use it for something else, I still have this to look embossed. So it really wasn't a failure. It was just another chance to be creative. <laughs> But anyway, that is how you um, that how you emboss. Years ago, we had like an embossing mat, and it was super great for this. But we don't have that, so you know, as paper crafters, we try. Well, what else can we try? So there you go. It does work, um, and I love how that looks. Oh, I know what it is. I used a different snowflake. Maybe that's what it was. But I like it. What do y'all think? I love it. Okay, next. So now we're going to talk about partial cutting. I have partially cut this layer so that you can still see, but I didn't cut the whole tree out. I just, or the branch out. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to use my garden green ink pad. I'm going to stamp my branch. So I have my layer that I'm going to be die cutting. Move this over here. I need a bigger area underneath my mat, uh, underneath my camera. <laughs> I'm just going to place this on our mat. I 
I decided my card looked a little Christmassy with my red and my green, so I added a, I added a yellow butterfly and a yellow um, flower. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna line this up, making sure that I'm uh, straight on both sides. And then I'm gonna take my die and I'm gonna line it up like this. I'm gonna take a piece of washi tape. Then I'm going to pick it up. Don't die cut this like I did the first time. <laughs> there you go, push that aside. We don't wanna cut that. Whoops. So we're gonna put that down. Same sandwiching, I haven't changed anything. And we're gonna take this off. I think that washi tape has had it. I've used it a lot. <laughs> and so now we have this. I did emboss with the new Dots and Checkers uh, dual embossing folder, but again, I'll have that in the list of supplies that I used. And then this is just going to pop up right here, lines right back up, and it just gives you more of a 3D effect. It's just a, it's just a unique way to use your dies. So it's called partial die cutting, okay? All right, final one. So for this one, I'm going to use the help of my Stamparatus because honestly, I don't know if it's my eyes or what, but sometimes I go to, I stamp the image first and then I go cut it out and I'm off. And I'm like, oh, I thought I had that lined up. So I hope this helps you. Um, we're going to place a piece of basic white right here on our mat. And since my stamp is rubber, I don't need the little uh, foam mat that comes in there. So we're gonna place this flower right here. This flower especially is a struggle for me. So that's why I picked this one. It is from Positive Thoughts. I love the stamp set. But, so I love the stamp set, but I struggled when I was cutting out um, the, with the die. So we're gonna take our ink and we're gonna stamp. Okay, nice, pretty, real red, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the die and I'm gonna cut it out of this piece, okay? I'm, you don't need to see me cutting, struggling with the, with the stamp and cutting emboss on my high table. So I'm just gonna go cut this out. I'll be right back. And I'm gonna tell you, that was a lot easier on my lower table to use my Stamparatus. <laughs> okay, so we have our flower that we cut out. And so now I'm gonna take, move my magnet down a little bit, and I'm just gonna start lining this up. Which way does it go? We, oh, oh, nope, yep, there we go. Now I chose red so that you would hopefully be able to see it. So I hope you can see that I have got this perfectly lined up where I need it. And I want it to stay right there, so I'm gonna get a piece of washi tape. I'm gonna tape these together, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the piece I cut out and we're gonna play the same game, okay? I'm gonna pop it right back in like a puzzle piece. I'm gonna ink up my flower. Now the Stamparatus really helps with this. This is, if you have not purchased a Stamparatus, this is the reason you need the Stamparatus because it will help you every single time when you are doing your die cutting. There you go, okay? So, we covered a lot today. 10 different ways, plus I threw in an extra bonus for you on how to um, help with your die cutting issues that you may have. 
and I hope that it helped you. I hope it gave you some new ideas. I hope that it inspired you. Let me know in the comments below what you think. So I wanted to show you a finished card using that technique that I used with the Stamparatus. Even though it may seem like I did an extra step by doing that, I ensured that all of my stamped images were die cut perfectly the first time. I didn't have to restamp. I didn't have to do anything. I did that on both of these cards. So as you can see, my flowers are perfect. And this flower is so odd because it's got so many petals. So I hope that you will try that technique the next time that you're struggling or try any of my die cutting hacks that I shared on today's video. Happy stamping, y'all! Thank mm -hmm. you.